Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Sabuna and I'm Barry from Barry Time Club. And today we're going to be looking at some more calculus, specifically calculus the fourth. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot we had a scheduled visitor today, but he's late. I guess we just have to get him right there. And he here? Oh yeah, there he is. And uh, if I close this tab, oh, well, there he is, I guess. Look at him. Anyways, with that done, we're going to move on to the actual calculus. So let's say you have, hmm, I don't know, it uh, out of x is equal to x plus 3 whole squared minus uh, so minus x plus 9 over x and I want you guys to figure out so what is the limit of f of x it's x goes to zero I'm gonna give you 10 seconds if you want more time pause the video 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 and here's the thing if you pl plug in the regular plug-in strategy, that's going to give you 0 plus 3 whole squared minus 0 plus 9 over 0. Which just gets you to the old uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 9 is 0 over 0. Very bad. But there is some hope here. Because what we can do is we can actually unsimplify this we can uh elongate this so x plus 3 whole square can you rewrite it is x squared plus uh 6x what did i do there plus 9 minus x plus 9 so obviously these do cancel out and then this gives you 5x and you divide that by x. So that gives you x squared plus 5x over x. You can factor x squared plus 5x. You can factor x out of x squared plus 5x to get x, x plus 5 over x. These two cancel out, that's giving you x plus 5. That means that since f of x is x plus 5, we can now use the normal plug-in sub method to get the limit of f of x if x approaches 0 is 0 plus 5 equals 5. And you can also demonstrate this by going to decimal. Wait, is that an instrument player? Klaxon? So if I go to Desmos, so Desmos, and I try to graph this, it's going to look the exact same as x plus 5. So this is going to be a tricky one to type, but um x plus three whole squared that's how it's gonna look like but then to do this minus x plus nine then this is how it looks like and boom and you divide all of that stuff by x. Oopsies, I think it doesn't recognize it that way. So, 
x squared, I can always do this way, mm, plus 6x six six plus 9, and then minus x plus 9, and we put that. So, look, it looks the exact same as x plus 5, because if we graph x plus 5, it's going to overlap. Oh, that's x plus 8. Oh, please. They overlap perfectly. Except, let's just put push that aside for now. When you look at the red graph and you set the x coordinate to 0, let's look at it. 0, comma, undefined. See? It shows that it's undefined when you reach an x coordinate of zero. Let's show that again. Zero comma undefined. And even if we put the table that shows everything, then it shows three, four, undefined, six, seven. So even though the y coordinate is supposed to be five, it's undefined. The computer blacks out. So, that's basically how everything works. Thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time. But uh, first, uh, before you tune into the next episode, if you're watching from the future, of course, I request that you check out a site called Brilliant. It's really good if you want to learn something new. Brilliant is a math and science organization. It also it has millions of courses on whatever you would desire. Join Brilliant today. If you want co uh, math courses, here they are. Geometry courses, here they are. Want to even learn more about coding there? Here they are. So, join Brilliant today. And you can, uh, the first 1,000 people to join Brilliant will get a 20% off using the code of Berry Science Lab that we have prepared for our dedicated viewers. Thank you, everybody. Bye.